Hello, I'm Jane Tarjan, and I'm the president of a youth mental health group based out of Carlton Place High School. We are known as Just a Couple Teens Talking, otherwise known as Jack Squared. Our main focus is to spread awareness about youth mental health, as well as reassure kids that they are not alone through whatever struggles they happen to be going through. I'm also known as the suit guy. At first I thought it would be pretty cool to wear suits, because I was the president. Then it turned into something more. I made a commitment to my group, stating that I'd wear a suit to all of our meetings, events, and presentations. Out of that, it then developed into Suit Up for Mental Health. I did not only create this just so I could wear suits. Okay, well maybe that was just a bit of it. The actual reasoning behind it was, when people wear suits or fancy clothing, uh, they're showing respect, as well as being respectable themselves. So I figured, hey, why don't we tie that in with youth mental health awareness? The initiative we are currently working on is called Man Up for Mental Health, which specifically targets young men and their mental health. There are many initiatives just for men. One of them that you've probably already heard of is called Movember, where for the month of November, men grow mustaches to help promote awareness of prostate cancer. They have now extended their promotions to men's mental health. Like this, I have been suiting up to bring awareness to young men's mental health in hopes that people will speak up more about this issue. Four out of five suicides among young people in Canada are committed by men, despite men's lower reported rates of depression. One in five men will experience a mental health issue this year. Men's depression is currently ranked third in terms of disease burden in high-income countries such as Canada. One of the mental health issues that can affect people is depression. Depression in men doesn't always look like the typical depression of low mood, anxiety, and loss of interest. In men, it tends to be a little bit different. Men who are depressed may become more irritable and angry. Their behavior can be hostile, aggressive, or sometimes abusive. Some will also turn into abusing alcohol and drugs. Men have not typically been comfortable with discussing their feelings or expressing their emotions, especially when it comes to sadness, depression, or stress. A study was even done by the Children's Hospital in Eastern Ontario, and it stated that almost 48.7% of male teens said that they can't or don't talk to anybody concerning their mental health. Men can face a variety of different challenges when it comes to managing their mental health, with shame and embarrassment often preventing them from reaching out and taking action. This is probably because men are taught to man up if they attempt to show emotions or express feelings, and society has not typically encouraged men to express themselves. They may worry they look weak. Man up is about gaining awareness of men's mental health and encouraging young men to speak up and to speak out. A lot of these patterns that I just discussed with you, I noticed in my own story about men's mental health. My depression was not always recognizable. It developed slowly over time. In my case, I just bottled it up. My stress and emotions, and eventually there was so much in that bottle, it burst into a million pieces. When I look back now, I can see the signs of where it started to go downhill. I can see now where there were points in time where I could have reached out for help. For years, I did not know what it was, but I first noticed depression and sadness from as early as 10 years old. From as early as grade one, there were kids that would bully me physically and mentally. It became worse for me in grade four when I had started to put on weight. The physical and mental bullying increased as I was seen different from the others. This made me feel terrible about myself. The sadness grew and the depression started to build up. I just bottled it up. I did not talk about it because I did not know how people would react. I kept everything inside all the way up until grade 11. That year was my breaking point. At that time, I did not think I had serious enough issues to talk about them to someone. Also, I thought if I did talk about it, everyone would think I was crazy. Even though in grade eight, most of the bullying stopped, the bullying from grade school made me insecure about myself. Therefore, I was constantly worried about what others thought of me. In grade 9 and 10, there was still some intimidation. I tried my best not to let that bother me. I was worrying a lot about what other people were thinking and saying about me behind my back. The summer after grade 10 was what led up to my breaking point.
Well, on top of the bullying, um, there was the illness of my grandmother. Uh, my grandma was diagnosed with terminal cancer. And uh, the leading up to her passing, um, those were a hard three months for me. She was like a second mother to me. She, uh, she kept the family together. It was a really big loss when she passed. I started dressing up in suits uh, to visit her in the hospital. It was more of a respect kind of thing, but it was a bonus because she would always smile when she would see me in suits. And uh, it just filled my heart with joy. I wore suits for every visit until my grandmother's passing and only started wearing suits again for the suit up for mental health. It was getting more difficult to see her in the hospital. The chemo and the radiation were making her very weak. It was a rough summer for our family. My family was almost always sad and it was hard on all of us. One early morning, I thought I was going to visit her in the hospital. So I did my usual. I put on a dress shirt and a tie. My mom came in the door and told me that she had passed away. I had a really hard few weeks after that. I was slacking in school and I was constantly feeling down. I started losing interest in a uh, band. I, I used to love playing music and I, I just quit. I quit the band. I was the president of a uh, Boy Scout Venture Group. I was supposed to lead them, but uh, I just stopped showing up to events, kind of left that. I noticed my moods and behaviors were changing. I was getting more easily agitated. Over time, I noticed I was pushing people away, and I was taking my frustrations out on my friends and family. I now noticed that there was a pattern. I was changing. I started heavy drinking, going to parties, and as well as getting involved with drugs. The heavy drinking and the doing drugs lasted about eight months. That brought us to spring. Some of the people I knew were going through some serious problems, and it was deeply affecting me. I did not know how to talk about it to anyone. So as I did with my own issues, I bottled up the emotions for so long, and that is when I exploded. After a heavy night of uh, drugs and drinking, I attempted to overdose, and I was then transported to the emergency room. I realized after I did it on what a huge mistake I had made um, because of the people I affected that day, like my friends and family, I, uh, I really hurt them. I realized that I do matter that I have a purpose in life, and that people actually do care about me. Depression does not happen overnight. It builds up. It was years before that crisis that the sadness and hopelessness was always simmering in the background. I just bottled it up. I never learned how to cope with all those emotions and feelings. In grade 11, I opened up to the school child and youth worker after getting out of the hospital. I realized I needed help. Around that time, she referred me to a counselor from Open Doors, which is a child and youth mental health agency. The turning point for me is when I started to get into youth engagement by forming the Just a Couple Teens Talking group in my school to speak up about mental health awareness. We also joined a provincial youth network called The New Mentality, which included youth from all over Ontario who were also doing projects to promote mental health awareness. We went to a new mentality conference in Toronto for a week to learn skills to become speakers and leaders to speak up about youth mental health stigma in our community. And yes, I did wear suits the whole time. I started to get better after that because this got me to think and act more positively about myself and my life. And also reaching out to others who have gone through or are going through a rough time makes me feel better because then I know at least someone is reaching out to me and to reassure them that they are not alone through whatever struggle they happen to be doing. I want to use my story so people can see that it is not something they should hide, and to not let them be alone through their struggles, as well as reassuring them that it is better for them to reach out to someone.